WBS Mechanics. This lesson illustrates a very important part of project planning and management. Work breakdown structure, commonly referred as WBS, is the key tool for planning the project according to its scope. WBS completely defines the scope of project, which means that whatever is mentioned in WBS is the part of project and whatever is missing is not. Therefore, WBS plays a very pivotal role in project planning. The principle of WBS is management by deliverables. Consider an example of a book writer to understand this principle better. When starting to write a book, author classifies his topics of discussion in chapters. Then chapters into subtopics, and if required, he classifies it more. Similarly, when planning a project, WBS classifies your project according to the nature and requirements of different works. The smallest level of WBS is called work package. We will discuss about work package in later slides. Another good definition of WBS is that it is a powerful tool for expressing the scope of extent of a project in simple graphical terms. This definition prompts about another important characteristic of WBS, which is the graphical representation of project's scope. We will have a look at the architecture of WBS through a general graphical representation in a short while. The starting point has always been one of the most important concerns when it comes to a project. WBS helps in this case as it is an initial phase document in project management. In the initial phase, before we actually start to work on the project, it is very important that we are clear with the planning, management schedules, costs, changes and other aspects of the project. WBS defines these parameters and this helps to sail the project ship in the right direction. WBS follows the strategy of dividing the project into small work packages which can be individually planned and controlled. Here we have a simple structure which just gives an idea of how WBS is designed. I would like to add that this figure is only an example and WBS is not limited to follow these levels of structure. The top level always holds the project title and the tree starts from level 2. Level 2 is classified here as a project teams which is most common practice. But you may follow a different approach in classifications at level 2 according to your project needs. A project may have further classifications among the teams and it can go to as many levels as you want. Here we are assuming level 3 to be the final level of WBS which is defined as work packages. Let's have a look at what actually are work packages. As we discussed in previous slide, the smallest level of WBS is called a work package. Each work package contributes some deliverables for the project scope. Now the question is that when we can decide that uh, a project could be the smallest level of WBS or it should not be further divided. For this discussion we have some rules of thumb. The first rule is 80 hour rule which says that if a deliverable requires the activities of less than 80 hours, it should be at least at the last level of WBS. That is a WBS work package. Then, the second rule is based on the reporting period. If 80 hour rule doesn't work, we can go for the second rule, which says that the work package sh uh, duration should not be longer than a reporting period. Since this work leveling varies from project to project and making rules may limit the use of WBS. So the last rule gives complete command to the project manager. This rule is named as if it makes sense rule. The project manager may know the situation better and if he is unable to classify the work packages according to the first two rules then he may go for which makes better sense. There are a few more important roles of WBS besides managing the work packages. The partition of major project deliverables doesn't only make it easier to plan and manage, but it also helps improving the accuracy of cost estimates. The mechanism provided by WBS for collecting and organizing the actual costs of the project is another good contribution of WBS towards better planning and prediction. Moreover, WBS also provides a mechanism of 
performance analysis, such as measurement, control, and prediction. While designing the WBS, one rule is very important to be followed. This rule is referred as 100% rule. 100% rule actually defines the WBS should have all the deliverables that are defined in the project's scope. It is very important to understand that we are talking about deliverables and the source of these deliverables may be different such as internal, external, interim and project management. These categories include all the possible sources of deliverables and therefore WBS will hold all the possible deliverables of the project which leads to a complete scope of the project. Another important notice is that WBS should not hold any work package which is not the part of project scope. By now it's very clear that WPS plays a very important role in planning, management and cost analysis. Therefore it is obvious that even some minor mistakes in the planning phase may cause cost overrun in implementation phase. Here are some precautionary measures which will help reduce the chances of cost overrun. First and most important thing is that we need to make sure that there is no overlap in the scope definition of any two work packages. That is, each work package should be completely independent and the deliverables should not coincide with another work package deliverable. If it is not taken good care of, then it may result in duplicate work and misunderstanding of responsibility and authority. Secondly, we should be careful while making a work package that it gives out some output or deliverable. Only actions should not be classified as separate work packages. Now, looking at this skeleton, let's understand how WBS numbering is done according to its different levels. Here we have a comparatively bigger structure with a maximum number of five levels. WBS level one is dedicated to the project title, which holds the summary of all the further levels. Level two is numbered in 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 and similar fashion. Similarly, when it goes into the third level, numbering is denoted by three numbers such as 1.2.5, 1 1.2.5 means that we are talking about the fifth branch of 1.2 and 1.2 means the second branch of the project. This structure also indicates that it is not necessary that all the work packages are on the same level. Here we have work packages on level 3, level 4 and level 5 as well. Now let's have a look at the example and see what we have learned in the previous slides. It is a graphical representation of a project plan of building a house. Here at the level 1 we have the project title itself. At level 2 it is divided into 7 more phases. Namely 1.1 is categorized as site work, 1.2 is the foundation, 1.3 is rough ins, 1.4 is interior finishes, 1.5 is exterior finishes, 1.6 is landscaping and similarly 1.7 is the completion phase. These phases are further divided into work packages at level 3. Note that level 3 is the last level in this WBS. Therefore all the items in level 3 are work packages and are responsible for some outcomes which will contribute towards the completion of the house. As we have gone through all the description of WBS and its graphical representation, it's time to disclose sort of bad news that Microsoft project does not support the schematic graphical representation of WBS. But to deal with WBS and Microsoft project, we need to flatten the graphical structure into activity listing as shown in this slide. It does not involve any rocket science, but it is simply transformed into a list. The difference can easily be spotted that different levels of WBS structure are handled by different intents in activity listing. This activity listing is ready to be imported in Microsoft project and does not need any more modifications. With this slide, I'm going to end this topic of WBS mechanics. Before signing off, I would like to repeat the key thought that the WBS defines the way your project will be addressed from a deliverables point of view. 
Deliverables are defined here as both project documentation artifacts or the project products. We followed several references to summarize this information on WBS and even beside these references, there are a bunch of sources of knowledge on internet about WBS. Thank you for watching this video.